Hi, my name is Kmot. This is a continuation of a presentation in branches, and I'd like us to tackle the branch bank account. For ease of reverence, I'd like us to refer to this presentation as 2.1.3. I'd like us to look at the question paper, which was written on the 22nd of November, 2016. And that question paper, requirement 2.1.3 related to the preparation of the branch bank account. I'd like us to employ the Excel spreadsheet to illustrate the preparation of a branch bank account. I'd like us to refer to the branch bank account as the T account. I quickly want to go to the given information that contains transactions that we're going to take into account in the preparation of a branch bank account. Those are essentially the transactions that we're going to take into account in preparing the branch bank account. I need to highlight the fact that not all transactions will be taken into account. So the cut dates must be able to clearly distinguish those transactions that have an impact on the branch bank account. Before we go to the nitty gritties of completing the branch bank account, there are a few aspects I'd like to emphasize. That highlighted statement, uh, cut dates were specifically told that the cash is transferred to the head office at the end of each month. Essentially what it means is that whatever balance that we have after the preparation of the branch uh, uh, bank account, we're going to transfer it to the head office. Remember, the head office is like the branches, and uh, it's possible that all branches might be required to transfer whatever cash they have to the head office. It's important that I need, to, it's important that I bring to your attention the fact that. Uh, uh, for the given transactions, we have uh, balance opening balance relating to the cash and bank, and we also have the closing balance. However, we require to transfer uh, the cash at the end of each month to the head office. So even though we have uh, the closing balance, so before we actually transfer to the head office, we're going to retain that amount relating to a balance at the end of uh, the month. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the closing balance if the head office didn't permit the branch to retain a certain amount. So I want to emphasize that, uh, yes, we have the closing balance uh, that has to be retained in order to cater for any emergencies that might require cash. Moving along swiftly, I'm going to take you to the preparation of the uh, branch uh, bank account. Let's quickly identify transactions that will have an impact on the branch bank account. And as we see those items, I'm gonna post them to the branch uh, bank account. The first item relates to cash and bank on 1 March 2015. I've already mentioned that this relates to the opening balance. I'm going to take that amount, it's a copy and paste exercise. I'm going to take it to the debit side I'm going to take it to the debit side, there you go. I'm going to take it to the debit side of the branch bank. Remember, it's, it's important that you understand fundamental principles pertaining to the T account. If you're doing a T account specifically relating to an asset, in this case, branch bank, it's an asset, you need to remember that the opening balance of any asset account will be reflected on the debit side and the closing balance will be reflected on the credit side. The description will be balance. BD indicates that it's for the opening balance. So it's a balance brought down from the previous year. And we're also going to take, I just want to write the description in the meantime, balance, carry it down. So this indicates that we'll be dealing with a, a closing balance. I just quickly want to highlight the fact that uh, in certain activities we might be required to calculate this balance as a balancing figure. But in this case, the balance is given. Let's quickly go take the balance. There you go. The balance is given as balance in the bank on 29th of February 2016. I'm going to take that amount. I'm going to copy. I'm going to transfer it there to the credit side. So this tells you that uh, if there's a difference between the debit side and the credit side and you need to do the balancing, the balancing will not specifically relate to uh, the closing balance as is already provided. Let's quickly go establish what other amounts impact 
uh, branch uh, bank account. I don't want to waste your, your time, so I'll quickly highlight those that do not have an impact on the branch bank account. Those do not have an impact, they affect other uh, general ledger accounts. However, the cash sales definitely has an impact as it, it will increase uh, the branch bank account. Therefore, it will be taken to the debit side of the branch bank account. There you go. Debit side. If you want to see uh, the other leg relating to the credit side, remember in accounting, we employ an important principle that says for every uh, debit, there has to be a credit. It's called the double entry system. So the contra account will be branch stock. Remember, this is sales, so it pertains to stock. If you want to see the credit to complete the double entry system, you will visit the branch uh, stock account, and that's where you will see the credit on, on the branch uh, stock account. Moving along swiftly, let's go see whether there are any other items. Uh, discount, it doesn't affect, doesn't affect. I'll highlight for ease of uh, reference. There you go. Cash received from uh, debtors. Definitely, it has to do with cash. It's reducing debtors, but it increases our bank. Therefore, we'll take it to the debit side once more again. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to take it to the debit side. The contra account. Just quickly want to do that. I quickly need to change that. The contra account, it's branch debtors. Remember, this is reducing debtors. There you go. So if you wanted to see uh, the credit to complete the double entry system, you'll have to go to branch debtors. Moving along swiftly, let's go back quickly to our transactions. Are there any other transactions that impact the preparation of the uh, branch uh, bank? Uh, let's quickly establish um, Expenses paid by the branch. So there are several expenses that were paid by the branch. Certainly, they will affect the branch bank account. They will reduce uh, the branch bank account. Uh, so we've got the following wages, telephone, municipal expenses. All those will reduce uh, the branch bank account. And we also have other expenses that were not necessarily that related to the branch, but they were paid by the head office. Therefore, they will not uh, affect uh, the branch bank account. So all those will be taken to the debit side. Let me quickly start with amounts. Copy. Allow me to finish with all amounts. Copy. That's the last amount relating to expenses. Now we're gonna battle with the description. Wages, so the contra account will be branch wages, it's an expense. I'm just going to just drag it down and I'll just change the descriptions. If you remember the other one related to telephone. And the last one related to municipal expenses. I'm just going to say municipal Municipal, there you go. There weren't any other transactions that specifically affect the branch uh, a bank account. All transactions have been taken into account. Let's quickly go down. Nothing else. All transactions have been taken into account. Remember, now it's important to understand what this entails. The cash is transferred to the head office after uh, the bank has retained an amount of 10500 So the balancing figure will be taken to the head office. And the contra account that we're going to use for the balancing figure, whether it's on a debit side or on a credit side, it will be head office bank, as that amount will be taken to the head office bank. Let's quickly go to our T account. As you can see at the moment, the debit side is not equal to the credit side. I just quickly want to change that to red. So we want, to, we want that to be green. Essentially, we want this, that to be equal to that amount. We know for certain that in accounting, uh, the greater of the two sides will be taken, will be reflected on both sides. So at the moment, we have 37, 33, 700 on debit side, and we have 19,000 on the credit side. Therefore, we're going to take that 33, 700, that uh, is the sum 
of your debit side, it has to be taken to the credit side as well. But how we're going to do it is we're going to balance the credit side. Let me quickly do the illustration. So I'm going to say equals to, I'm going to take that. I'm going to minus the sum of the sum of all that. That's essentially, remember, we also need to minus that. We're going to get to an amount of 14,640, which relates to head office, head office bank. So essentially, this will be the transfer that is taken to the head office bank. Let me quickly make that green so that, yes, there you go. So they're both uh, equal. Uh, just a quick comment on the marker location. That's how the assessor wanted the marker location to be like. Okay, I just quickly want to fix something. Please allow me. I know it's uh, wasting valuable time. There you go. There you go. Just uh, if there are any questions, please feel free to post them to my cell number via WhatsApp or you can post them to my email address. Thank you.